Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are out here at the uh, Woodland Homestead and the power's out, <laughs> which I, I think is probably common out here. This is, uh, we haven't been here a full year yet, so I don't know all the, all the little, uh, the little things that happen out here, but we're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we're out in the woods and uh, lots of trees, lots of fields, lots of, you know, power lines kind of stretched all over the place. And so I have a feeling that, uh, power outages are probably fairly common here so something we're gonna have to deal with but there's no backup generator here so at the last house we had that nice propane uh, automatic backup generator we don't have that here I plan to get one down the road so on the back of our house here uh, one of the things that the inspector mentioned to me when we first moved in was that there was this uh, wire sit hanging out here that was attached to nothing and it was live uh, so they just had these these wires taped off and, uh, and this was all live wire. So that's a four wire. I think this is uh, hooked up to a 30 amp breaker on the inside. I don't know if it was set up to like a hot tub or uh, you know, maybe they had used to have an air conditioner back here. I don't know what was back here, but they basically just capped it off and, and just left it sit here. So that uh, works out really well for us because we need a 220 volt uh, four wire hookup to hook the generator up and run our panel. Well, we won't be able to hook up the generator today, it looks like, because the they don't really have, <laughs> they don't have anything I need up at Home Depot because other people's power is probably out as well. And so this is the part of the problem with being unprepared, but I do have some, some ways to, to power things in our home. Uh, one of the things that I have gotten uh, a few years ago was one of these, they call it a generator, a solar power generator, but basically it's a, it's a giant lithium ion battery in here with a big pure sine wave inverter. Um, this has, uh, I can power everything with this. I can charge it with solar power, which I have solar panels outside. Uh, I can charge it up. We always keep this charged up, um, you know, down in the basement, ready to go whenever we need it. And uh, has USB power here. It's got a, a good uh, USB-C charger. And then on the back side, it's got two 1000 watt uh, outlets. So this actually will power power tools, uh, air, small air compressors, you know, this, this will power some, some decent stuff. And so I, I use this all the time. We also have this smaller one that has a uh, wireless charger on the top for phone charging. And then it's got two, uh, these are just uh, 300 watt outlets. And so this is a little bit lower power, but this is perfect to carry around from room to room, power lights and other things like that. And so for short power outages, uh, hopefully like this one will be, <laughs> uh, these things work great to just run the things that we need around the house. Well, it looks like it's our turn to try to get some things fixed. They're coming up the driveway here right now. Or trying to get up the driveway anyway. Well, power's back on. And uh, that's a good thing. But the well's not coming on. So we're thinking that uh, the lightning strike, whatever it hit around here, um, Consumers Energy was out, and uh, when they when they came out to fix ours, they had already been all over the place. Uh, I talked to the guy down the road, and he said that uh, lightning came, you know, hit something, and it just blew everything up. They had transformers, and they were on the poles at the neighbor's house uh, down here across the street. Uh, behind us here, they were all over the place fixing all up and down all the different poles, putting new equipment up. So whatever hit, it, it fried a bunch of stuff. And it looks like it it probably backfed through and maybe went through the well circuit to the ground. I, I don't know. The well the well breaker was tripped, so we've got somebody out who's gonna take a look at it. It's it's getting into the evening now, so it's about six o'clock and uh, we still haven't had water. We haven't had water since about eight o'clock this morning, uh, which is a problem. And uh, so everything else is working. We, we've had a few LED bulbs that burn out in the kitchen and, and some outdoor lights and stuff, which that should be a pretty easy fix, but the well is a big one. So hopefully the well pump itself isn't damaged. Maybe it's just some wiring or something we can replace. Um, either way, it's gonna be a hassle and uh, I'm not looking forward to finding out the answer here, what this guy says either way. What is the, what is the center pipe? That is, gives you something to get a hold of to pull it up. Oh, okay. So you can thread into it and then lift it out? Mm-hmm. Well, it definitely, uh, he just left and it looks like he's going to come back tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's definitely not the greatest news, it sounds like. We still have a, a, a glimmer of hope that uh, we could, um, it could just be that the wires going down 
in the, into the well pump or down to the well pump itself, uh, maybe they burned out, shorted out uh, somewhere down the pipe. So we don't know how deep the well is here. It could be 60, 80 feet, could be deeper than that since we're up on the hill here. So it just really depends uh, what he finds tomorrow. He's got to bring his truck back, his well truck, and pull it out um, and then see what's going on. We also have some other problems that he pointed out that I didn't really uh, think about. One, number one, this is, there's supposed to be a foot of clearance above the ground here. And it looks like they moved this landscaping or did something here where they, you know, probably used to come down to this level and slope back. And then this retaining wall must have been back further, which is probably what I'll end up having to do is move this, move this retaining wall to the other side of the well or I'm gonna have to dig this out um, and make some kind of drainage through here so water can run down and get away from this. The problem with it right now is if we get a heavy rain, water will come down here and it can actually get underneath that cap. Um, this thing's not really sealed. I mean, it's just a it's just a metal cap just sitting on top of here. And uh, this, this is the wires coming from the house and there's no ground wire. So it's just the, the red and the black and no ground. It's just grounded to the actual well, actually, he's got a, the ground wire comes up from the pump. It's not connected to anything. So there's no ground in here. That could have been part of the problem. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's an issue. But it is what it is. We got we to gotta fix it. So this brings up some, uh, this, this kind of brought to mind a few things. You know, number one, you know, out here on, the, on this, this homestead, we, we don't have a, a reliable backup source of water. You know, we, we have a pond here, so sure, we could go and take buckets of water from that nasty pond and bring it up here for toilets or something, but I'm not going to really, I don't want to feed that to the animals necessarily. It's, it's, not a, it's kind of a stagnant uh, bit of water, but it just brings to mind the, the priority of, of getting rainwater collection set up here. We have a perfect setup for it. I've got some great plans, but uh, we need to get it done. But this is for the animals, right? I think it needs to be rinsed out. I'm thankful for our church giving us some water. We got the water hooked up. All right, we're getting some water for the goats first and the dogs next and then the toilets after that. So the toilet, you can just fill it in here or you can just pour it right in the bowl. Let's wash it. I like that way better. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, let's see if we can get this thing fixed. So he does have, so there's threaded couplers on there, but that's plastic pipe. Yep. So is that what you expected? That's what I was hoping. Okay. <laughs> that's why I come out of there so easy. Cool. Well, I didn't see any fried wires anywhere halfway down, so. No. So is water gonna come up out of there? So this is to clean it out, kind of. Oh. 
That is crazy. Look at that. actual water pump being up that's uh that's better so we'll have to let it run in the house for a while too i'm sure you want to drink that water no so the trick now is you have to get that thing fit on the fitting. Yeah. That should be fun. Yeah. First time hit it. It certainly isn't uh, isn't a lot of fun to not have water, but we have everything back up and running and it doesn't look like there's any other damage to anything else in the house uh, besides the well and a few light bulbs. And so uh, we've got that stuff fixed up and, and we're back in business. But this has taught us a, a really important lesson in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, we only were without water for about 24 hours or a little bit longer than that. It really doesn't seem like that much of an inconvenience, but let me tell you, it is a huge inconvenience to not have water just for that long. There are five of us living in this house, plus uh, several goats and chickens, uh, fish and bunnies and dogs and other things around here. We have all these plants, you know, and gardening things that uh, we'll, I'll show you in later videos. But there, there's a huge need for water, and we didn't have any. I, I didn't. I wasn't prepared, uh, and that's the bottom line: is that we were not prepared for something like this. Uh, I wasn't prepared with my generator at this new house yet, so I didn't have any way to power things when the power went down. Uh, that inlet box, you know, I have to fix and, and, and have a way to hook the generator up to the house. I don't have anything. Uh, we didn't have any stored water anywhere. I don't have rain collection set up here yet. There's just so many things that this, this just brought to our mind that we were, we were not prepared. Goats drink a lot of water. I've got a, a pregnant or a, a mother uh, in milk out there. Uh, she drinks a ton of water every day. Uh, the other goats and chickens, they need water too. The dogs need water. Now you can go to the store and buy jugs of water or something or do like we did and, and haul in barrels of water. You know, we need to flush toilets. We need to brush our teeth. We need to water to drink and cook with and all these other things. So, and water plants. It, it, it's just an enormous amount of water. We probably would go through um, probably about 50 gallons of water per day, uh, tw maybe 40 gallons of water. We didn't quite use the whole barrel up in the day. So probably about 40 gallons of water in a day if we were to just solely rely on a storage, uh, stored of storage water, stored water. So it's something that just really brought some projects that I had put off to the, the front of my list. The priority just jumped up a few notches. So number one, uh, I need a way to power the house with a generator or with several generators so that we can have are well working uh, unless it gets blown up by lightning and uh, and other critical things uh, that can be powered by a generator we've got to have some kind of rain collection set up here and so i have a, a great place a perfect place for some rain collection i've got a few different ideas uh, i've got a summer rain collection idea and i've got a year-round non-freezable rain collection idea that i uh, am going to play around with and so we have a few options uh, and things that I'll be, uh, that just need to get done. And so those are gonna move up in my priority list. I've got, uh, got some animals to care for and some other things that have to, have to come first, but that's gonna be high up there. So, but at the very minimum, we're gonna keep some stored water out. So we're gonna save some jugs like we did at our old house, uh, saved up maybe 10 or 15 gallons of water in jugs and then rotate through that. Uh, we can also have a few 55 gallon or, or five gallon buckets and we can also save some water in a 55 gallon drum, just have it stored out by the animals uh, just as a, as a backup. Uh, you can throw chlorine tablets in water that's outside like that and keep it good for, you know, for a long time as long as you just make sure it doesn't get algae in it. The one thing that really made me uh, be more aware of this, when this happened, I started to think, 
what if this were a widespread issue? What if there, you know, like when COVID happened, like everything shut down, it was a huge deal and the store shelves were empty, everything was gone. Like, I don't wanna be caught in a position where I couldn't have just driven up to the church. What if there was a line, the whole community's up there trying to get water because it's the only place? Or what if their power's out and they, no one has water, you know? So we really need to prepare for these things better. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, watching us uh, mess around with, uh, with our well and, <laughs> and power outages and other things. Uh, look forward to some of those things coming up in future videos. I'd love to have you tag along, of course, if you have not subscribed to the SSL Family Dad channel. Hit subscribe, hit the bell, you get notified when we post new content. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.